metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code. that parents tell their children. They have fantasy plots and try to teach a lesson. You want to hear a fairy tale? Uh, sorry, I don't really know how to tell any. Fine, come back here. I shouldn't have programmed you to be so cute. Okay, this story starts somewhere. Once upon a time, there was a wonderful, uh, arctic with a handsome, uh, penguin scientist. Wrong! You're already doing it wrong! Start with a princess. But how did I start wrong? Don't you know fairy tales? They need a princess and they all have a love story. And you should change the place. It's, uh, cold up there. <laughs> Is that so? Well, fine, I guess. It begins in the, uh, warm climate of Somewheresville. And there's a beautiful princess, because apparently that's how they start. And one day she ran into a, um, uh, musician. Yeah, he played the lute. It was love at first sight. Ahem. I said it was love at first sight. Hmm? <laughs> he decided to write the most beautiful song to impress Her Royal Highness. So he did. He played the best song, and she was very impressed. And then they got married, and they all lived happily ever after. They also got tax exemptions, which he needed as a musician. That's it? All he did was play a song? And he got the princess? <laughs> uh, maybe it was a magic song. The problem with your story is that there's no conflict. Nothing. Don't you see? Listen up. He can't get the princess just like that. He has to earn it. Make him work for it. <sighs> All right, fine. Now there is a bad guy who is no fun. <sighs> <laughs> Huh? You're a hoot if you think that you can have her hand. Uh, that sounds right. E <gasps> now you're stuck. You have to earn it. <laughs> I'm progressing the story with some conflict. <laughs> hey, princess. <clears throat> <laughs> so what happened next? I don't know. The tower's too tall, and maybe he left. They need a way to talk. There has to be some way to communicate. But how, though? Our heroes should use the classic telephone. 
telephones take the sound waves we make with our voice and change them into electrical impulses. These originally traveled by copper wire. The electrical signals would travel to the recipient and be converted back into sound waves. As long as those copper wires reach us, we can talk to someone halfway across the globe or a fairy tale kingdom. It'd be no problem to get telephone wires up the tower. Uh, hold on a second. So my fairy tale world has technology now? <laughs> Just a thought. Seems your characters are in a quandary. It's your story after all. You can tell it as you like. Okay, fine. They have a telephone. The poor musician was at a loss. Then he had an idea. He had a friend who could help him out. The clever know-it-all wizard. The wizard said to him, You're in luck, my friend, because in this fairy tale world, I have endless funding. Yesterday, I invented something phenomenal. It's called a telephone. When the wizard was done patting himself on the back, our hero took the new machine out of the tower, determined to make the storyline work. I mean, woo the princess. Hmm? The princess could finally hear the song and was impressed by the technology. They were happy forever and all was well. Hang on. That can't be everything. Oh, you're right. I forgot about the story's bad guy. Sounds to me the telephone's an easy way out. The witch wouldn't take kindly to this. <laughs> and she'd fight them. She'd cast a storm of magic. That'd do it. Not an actual storm. That would mess things up bad. Whatever. You think the princess is afraid of some lightning? I think she's a little better than that. Yeah, the musician is brave. In the story. Ah, uh, no doubt our heroes are brave. But it's the telephones we should be worried about. Remember, the electrical signals travel by copper wire. They have a magnetic field around them that help the pulses move. The problem with a physical copper wire is that someone can easily tap into that connection. Hey, you! Stop listening! Other problems can arise, too. The wires can be sensitive to radio waves. And lightning, too. Since it's electricity, just like the pulses in the wires. With old phones, sometimes even electric engines can interfere. With these old-school phone wires, a lot of things can make them go... Haywire! Get it? <laughs> Never mind. Because of that, a thunderstorm would really mess things up for our story's heroes. Good! That's what she should do. A minor hurricane should do it. <laughs> you think you're clever, huh? Oh, lightning! The princess can never hear his music, and they never find each other? Beats me! Mm hmm. That's brilliant! They can use the power of fiber optics instead of wires! Good job! What's fiber optics? Like oatmeal? Good solution! If you have a light source, you can spread the light by moving it to a body of water. The water will reflect within the water's edges, meaning the light will travel wherever the water travels. <gasps> that must be how the lighted fountains work at fancy hotels. They're so pretty. How surprisingly perceptive of you, Rosa. That's exactly right. 
By this same principle, light can move with the help of wires. These wires are glass instead of copper. They're also called optical waveguides. Here's how they work. Light enters the outer shell of the glass wire and bounces along the waveguide. The light particles travel wherever the wire goes. Aren't fiber optics interesting? And luckily for our fairy tale heroes, fiber optics can also be used to transmit sound waves. In the very same way, sound travels through the wires and can be converted to different types of media. You can even convert the sound waves into light waves. Isn't technology phenomenal? The sound waves can go through all kinds of different formats. Eventually, they get converted back into sound waves that our princess can hear. And here's something even better about fiber optics. It's a lot safer. There's less of a chance someone can listen in to your conversation. As another bonus, they aren't affected by external sounds, lightning, or engines. It's just what they need. Assuming they don't have copper, this could work better. To make fiber optics, all they need is quartz. And that is found in sand. <laughs> the characters have lots of that. They're in a desert. You're so right. The smart aleck wizard invented a new phone that used fiber optic cables instead of normal ones. He tossed the receiver up to the tower and played his beautiful song. This time, the sound was undeterred by lightning. The princess was impressed with the music. Not exactly Mozart, but her options were limited. And the annoying villain was finally out of options. <gasps> Does that end the story? Were they happy? I'd say so. This time the hero earned it. Don't forget, they also earned phenomenal phone service. <laughs> <laughs> No, BB. They just made up. That's why they're called fairy tales. Just remember that none of that actually happened. Oh, well, maybe that story happened in a different universe. Using glass wires instead of copper ones is a huge breakthrough in phone communication. Fiber optics have made technology soar in the past few years. Fiber optics also contributed to the internet, making the whole world connected. And we have this guy to thank for it, Charles Cao, an electrical engineer from Hong Kong who won the 2009 Nobel Prize in Physics for discovering fiber optics. My friend, are you sure that the risk is justified? By my calculations, the fuel simply won't be enough for the return journey. There's no risk. My new experimental engine uses less and flies much further. But why reinvent the wheel? After all, we can glimpse into the future and find out what kind of engines will be popular. Why overthink it when we can just look at what other clever folks have thunk up? This isn't a toy. I don't want to live always looking back at the future. Even if I make a mistake, it's still my own experience. And did you think about us? Yeah, yeah. I think about how surprised you will be when my experiment ends in complete success. Auf Wiedersehen. Attention, prepare for a crash landing on an unknown planet. Why crash landing? Fuel level is zero. Analysis of planet's surface. Air is not suitable for breathing. 
The planet is completely void of life. W we need to get out of here. Fuel level is zero. My mistake, my responsibility to fix. So, what do we know about engines? The principle of space movement is very simple. We burn fuel and receive fire. Fire flies out in one direction and pushes the rocket in the other direction. This process is called jet thrust. To travel far, you need to burn a lot of fuel. But the fuel level is zero. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Therefore, we need to think up a way to replace it. I'm an inventor. <laughs> I'll think something up. Hallucination. Computer, analysis of the planet's surface. The atmospheric composition is identical to that of the Earth. Air is suitable for breathing. The planet's surface is covered with grass. Do you see what I'm seeing? I don't see. I analyze. You're hallucinating as well? Computers don't have hallucinations. Yeah, yeah, there are only glitches. It really is grass. We're just missing flowers. And butterflies. Oh. Ah! Computer! What is happening? Obviously, the planet has the ability to materialize images generated by cognitive activity. That's impossible! My thoughts are making grass and butterflies? You could say that. This is not a daisy. This is a tulip. <laughs> this is not a tulip. It's a suitcase. <laughs> the sky is green. <laughs> there, red mountains. Higher. Yeah. <laughs> I can create my own world. The world of Pin. Pin Almighty. Whatever you think up is yours. <laughs> I'm like an artist! Paint, paint and create! Ha-ha! <laughs> I'm omnipotent! A can of fish! Open! <sighs> I need to refuel a little bit. Refuel? A barrel of rocket fuel! <laughs> Goodbye, you funny planet! Hello, computer. Can you tell me why we've stopped? Fuel level is zero. What do you mean, zero? We have a full tank! Obviously, the materialized objects must be located near the planet. I... I already figured that out. Hey there, my friends. How are you doing there? Hey, Ben. Hiya. Ah! Crash? Chico? <laughs> you know, generally speaking, I don't like you. I'm but getting home? With everyone. All this time, I was at home. It was a dream? 
Want to play some football now that you're up? Hey, football. <laughs> Look at that. It's like <laughs> Billy, join your team. Hey, hoop, 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 Pass, pass the ball, I said, you stubborn mule. Ole, ole, ole. Charge, let's go. Come on, guys, let's go. Hey! Help! Out! Aha! There you are! Oh my god! Ben! Did you get stuck or something? The ball's in play! Nine! This is not a dream. What are you talking about? No, well, I'm definitely not a dream. I don't know about Chico. He's always that sleepy. Yeah, yeah, you are not a dream. I just think about all of you. And this kind planet materializes you from my thoughts, from my memory. <laughs> You mean to tell me that Chico and I just crawled out of your head? Hee <laughs> hee! You couldn't even fit a ball in there! Not to mention Barry! <laughs> hey, what I do? But it's true. You're all here and here. <laughs> You're too much! You kill me! You're such a comedian! I want to go home. What is he even talking about? Is this pin ours? We need to get out of here. Fuel level is zero. <laughs> it means we need an engine without fuel. Such engines don't exist. Uh, we'll have to ask the future. My inquiry, an engine which works without fuel. Why didn't I think of it earlier? In order to fly in space, you don't have to use fire and burn lots of fuel. After all, in space is zero gravity, which means even the tiniest thing could move an entire rocket. You just need a lot of those tiny things that tiny thing could be, for example, an eon. An ion is an atom without one or many electrons. We can get a lot of lot of ions from the atoms of inert gases. We take the gas, mix it into a big tube, and shoot a lot of electrons at it. When the electrons hit the gas atoms, we get eons. Eons will fly in an accelerator and reach up to 50 kilometers per second. Eons fly in one direction and can propel the rocket in the other direction. This kind of engine is called an Eon engine. But where will we find so much suitable gas? No, oh, that's not a problem. And an ionic engine will work quite well with, for example, argon. There's lots of that in volcanic lava. Alles gemacht! <laughs> now I just need to check it. The device is ready for flight. Danke schon, my friend. My friends, it's time for me to come back home. So, when you fly away, all this will disappear? And we'll disappear too? You won't disappear. Think about each other, and you won't disappear. Think about each other, and you won't disappear. Chico, have you already started thinking about me?
Time flows differently for him. He could observe one process on Saturn for weeks on end. Bibi gets so lost in his work, my Bibi. <sighs> what if something bad has happened to him? Well, he'd write if something had, wouldn't he? Of course he would. There's no need to check in if everything's fine. I guess you're right. Hmm? There, Daddy. <gasps> it's from Bibi. So far, things are fine for me here. <laughs> Told you so. Hugs and kisses from Bibi. Okay, what else? Let me see. <sighs> That's it. Well, uh, at least you know that he's all right. Uh, that's good. That's great. I can't take this anymore. I have to see my little man! <sighs> we could fly to BB on a rocket, huh? <laughs> rocket travel takes too long. And it's dangerous. I need a device that would let me see my BB all the way from here. Um, a telescope? Telescope won't do it. BB is way too far. I need to make a device which will allow me to transfer images over a tremendous distance. Then I can see my sweet BB <laughs> waving at me. Isn't he in outer space? How could he send you a picture? I don't want just a picture. What I'm talking about are high quality moving images. Movies, you know. Huh? To me, that sounds kind of like magic. Hmm. <gasps> Not magic. Vladimir Kozmich Zvorikin was the first to successfully construct a device which was able to send and receive video images. This happened in the year 1931. At that point in time, the inventor was 42 years old. Today, descendants of that device can be found in almost every home, and the word television is known to even the smallest children. I still don't get it. How on earth can an image be transferred to some other place? Very simple. First, you have to split it up into smaller pieces, then pack them all up and send them out. Sounds like magic. When we watch a movie, we are actually seeing many separate still pictures one after another. The image on the screen is made of these frames. 
the quick changing of frames creates one long moving picture. That is why a video has to be broken into many separate frames before it can be sent somewhere. Moreover, each picture frame has to be broken into smaller parts as well. An image is made of millions of individual dots. These dots are so tiny that we can't even see them. If we transfer information about each dot to another place and recombine the dots in the new place, we can end up with a moving image. I did not understand a bit of that. But I think that's fine. But how can we reassemble all of the dots back into the image? We need something that is able to draw all of the dots incredibly quickly. Eureka! An image can be drawn by a beam of light. Then it will move right along the screen. If the light beam moves fast enough, then we will get framed. A TV screen is made up of separate dots that can translate any image which is sent to it. These dots are called pixels. Based on the information received, the TV lights up the appropriate pixels and we see the picture. <laughs> it's working! Hey, why am I black and white? I'm blue, right? Well, the model hairs Vorikin constructed only worked in black and white. There are too many other colors. It would need too many different colored light beams. It's just really hard. I remember reading there are a few what they call primary colors. Uh, three. And every other color is actually made from them. Oh, that's right! How could I forget? Yes! Indeed, there are three primary colors. They are red and blue and green. We only need three colors to create every color that we know. These primary colors are red, green, and blue. If we project the right kind of light beams on a white background, the white can become any other color. When red and green lights overlap, we see yellow. When green and blue lights overlap, we see aquamarine. And when red and blue overlap, we see magenta. When all three colored lights overlap, we see white. <sighs> I will soon be able to see my little one in color. I was right. I'm blue. Look. Good. Now we just have to get the camera up to baby. I'm hungry. When BB sends the radio signal with the video image, it will be received by this antenna, then passed onto the television. And the TV will convert the signal into a pretty picture. If we make an electron move from one side to the other, it produces waves, like a float on the surface of a pond. These are called electromagnetic waves. Light consists of electromagnetic waves as well. These waves can spread everywhere, even in the space between planets and stars. By monitoring electromagnetic waves, we can see and hear what is happening very far away from us. When electrons move in a transmitting antenna, they produce waves, which scatter in all directions. Receiving antenna capture those waves, which then make electrons inside the receiving device move as well. Thus, we can send and receive sound or images over great distance. 
Wow, it's snowing really hard in space. That's just the white noise. The signal hasn't arrived yet. Hooray! It's working! Just look! Hooray! <laughs> it's better than magic, magic because, because it's real! Baby! <laughs> it's my baby! There he is! <laughs> Danke, Herr Svoriken! Thank you, brave pioneer! <laughs> hey there, Pin! We came to visit our new best friend, your television! Well, guten tag! I've been giving the television system a teensy gigantic upgrade! Need your even newer best friend! Hmm? <laughs> but that's... Baby! And then the future of television! What good stars! Bright and beautiful! Interesting. But am I good or bad? The question, I believe, is rhetorical. Nein! It's a very serious question. I never do any bad things. And why? Because I was raised that way. Or maybe something's holding me back inside. Your conscience, maybe. And who is it, this conscience? How does he determine what's good and what's not so good? We're not going to get through this without an espresso machine. Oh, forget your silly machine. I really need to resolve this. <sighs> My friend, is there really any need to get upset? You've had integrity since the day you were born. It's us, ordinary mortals who are forced to struggle between right and wrong. Light, dark, good, and evil. So many riddles. Oh, Spheroscope, tell me about the nature of light and darkness. Light is a type of energy which we can see. Our eyes see a spectrum from red to violet. Therefore, our picture of the world depends on a substance's physical properties and its relation to the light and the optical spectrum. If we were able to see ultraviolet rays, then glass would not seem transparent to us. After all, ultraviolet rays cannot penetrate glass, and the world would look completely awkward in infrared light. So what is this light made of, then? It's not possible to categorically answer that question. On the one hand, light can be considered to be an electromagnetic wave. On the other hand, light is a stream of particles. These particles are called photons, and they have their own energy and zero mass. Compression! Uh, right. Uh -huh. Oh my god. <laughs> so how's the research coming along into good and evil? Uh, you what? Oh that! Ah, that can wait. I learned so many interesting things about this light. There you go. Seems we did okay without the espresso machine. This needs to be implemented immediately. <laughs> Time fly anchors away! <gasps> Compression! Ha <laughs> ha I must tell everyone about this! <laughs> oh? And now we have the cleanest in the entire universe, Lollipop. Holy carrots! Look, my friend, mm. I've performed an incredible experiment! 96% mm. pure Lollipop! Mm. Hey, invisible pin is much more interesting! Dear Twisty Lee Good! <laughs> Now I'll show you something that's truly ear-twisting. There we go. Now let's... Uh-oh! Uh, 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 <laughs> uh -oh. Are lollipops capable of doing that? <laughs> My sweet tooth friend, how could you be so careless in your handling and preparation of these compounds and mixtures? And why are you blaming me? Well, it wasn't me. Ah. 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 
Oh, well, I never. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Uh, that was very entertaining. Here's someone who'll appreciate my invention. <laughs> Rosa, it's me, Pin. Just a little invisible. Look at the glass. It's flying all by itself. Wow, cool! A flying glass! No, uh, uh, uh. oh, Rosa! I didn't mean to! Have you gone mad? No, it wasn't me! Who then? Was uh, it me? Uh, uh, Stop! That wasn't uh, funny at all! <laughs> <laughs> what a nice party! I think for now, I, think I won't this. tell anyone Maybe about my invisibility hat. It's so much fun! <laughs> I think it was me or something. Funny one to do. Well, no, <laughs> not really. And I even not too long ago placed a thumbtack on Rose's chair. <laughs> you want to say that that was also a bad trick? Oh, it was okay, I guess. What can you expect from a goof off like me? Oh, if only I could remember what I've done. But maybe you... I'm sleepwalking, or uh, maybe I even have multiple personalities. No. Huh? The mind got. What is it that I've done? So uh, what? Do you think you can help? I think a cage with a lock is a great solution. We don't need any kind of cage. Everything will be fine. I promise it to you. Why was I good before? Because I didn't have an invisibility hat. It's easy being good when everyone can see you. And vice versa. I could refrain. Forgive me, please. My friend, it's quite touching to try to take all the blame, but to believe that you were responsible for all that is impossible. No, integrity was built into your genes, I think. <laughs> it appears that nine. And this story about an invisibility hat is, forgive me, simply unscientific. But it's true. I'll explain the principles of my work. We already know that our atoms consist of a nucleus and electron. But there's much more free space in an atom than anything else. If an atom was a giant, giant whale, then its nucleus would be the size of a pea in its stomach. And the electrons would be tiny grains of sand on its skin. When I learned how much free space there was inside an atom, I thought that through such an empty and hole-filled atom of photons would easily fly through and everything in the world would be transparent. But this just isn't true. And that's because when a photon goes through an atom, 
it has to take the electron and shift it from a lower energy level to a higher one. If the difference between levels is not great and the photon is strong, then it easily shifts the electron and is immediately absorbed. That's why light doesn't pass right through an atom. That's how atoms of any opaque subject work. So how does light pass through transparent objects? The atoms just have a far greater distance between their energy levels. The photons try to shift the electron to a higher level, but it can't, so it continues through until it's passed through all the atoms. And in liquids and organic bodies, it's even more complicated. In addition to the electrons orbiting around, the molecules themselves are vibrating, flying here and there, rotating and changing. Through that field, it's incredibly difficult for photons to go through. But I thought up a way to increase the difference in the energy levels of my atoms and reduce the molecule vibration so the photons wouldn't get absorbed and PIN became invisible. <sighs> invisible and very bad. Neat! Can I see this thing? I already destroyed oh, it. Oh, and I almost believed you. <laughs> okay, I'll prove that I can be bad. Right, I'll take that and throw it at someone and I will be laughing. No. And? I... I can't do it. Because you're all watching me. <laughs> that is exactly what we were proving. <laughs> Just what I needed. Proving pins good. <laughs> well, it seems huh? everything worked out all right. <laughs> oh, I can't even walk at all. <laughs> <sighs> now everyone can be completely safe. <laughs> Crash. How about you doing an act of some real goodness? Oh. Oh, oh, come on. Uh, uh, uh. A moment of your attention. Oh, hey, uh. Pin, what's with you today? That was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, that's all me. Ha. I'm a very bad penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Change in flight path. Please confirm. Yeah, I confirm. That's new. Where are we going today? What's the difference? Where is us flying today? Nowhere. Go take a break. Better yet, go to sleep. Nothing interesting here. Better leave him alone or he might sting you. <laughs> what? Did he get stung by something? A fly. <laughs> he got stung by something, my friend. It was just something a lot larger. Remember, the whole thing started when you invented that shrinking machine for Sphere Jet. Let me go ahead and tell you about it. Yeah, a story went like this. So not too long ago, I was sitting at home and thinking, as I usually do, about something wonderful. Compression! <laughs> I did it! <coughs> now I have a shrinking machine in my Sphere Jet. We can shrink to any size. <coughs> Admit it, I'm a genius! Listen, genius, can't you stop by later, huh? I got a lot of work to do. Everything else can wait. I need a volunteer. And just where we find one of those... Just imagine it. I could shrink you so much that you could fit entirely in this jar. Entirely? Well, what are you waiting for, then? Start shrinking. I'm tired of waiting already. Ein moment. Get ready. I'm turning on the shrinker. Oh. oh, did it work? Yeah, yeah, it worked. Excellent. And now aim it directly at that big jar of beautiful honey. <gasps> Where are we? And where's my jar of honey? I suppose that it would be safer to conduct our first experiment using field conditions. So I transferred us to this field. 
The field is safer? It's become a total jungle. Regular insects have become as big as dinosaurs. Oh, ha, ha. Don't worry about bugs. Our shrinking machine will definitely protect us from any danger. Uh-oh. Oh. oh, and what do you think about those bugs now? Don't worry, nothing bad will happen. Just a little bit of turbulence. For my shrinking machine, that was no big deal. Uh, uh, be careful. Oh, what a nasty spider web. Full speed ahead! <laughs> Did it eat you or something? Why don't you make this music box bigger before the web's owner comes along, huh? Night! I'll prove that my shrinking machine is not like some kind of little fly. Did you escape? Well, think about it. A spider web is actually stronger than steel. That's science for you. For us, of course, poof, it's no big deal. But if you're the same size as a fly... So, you didn't escape. What a shrewd little porcupine. It's just a spider web. A spider web. All right. That was fun, but enough's enough. How about you unshrink us? I can't. If this spider web is this strong when we're shrunken, then it will crush us when we increase our size. We have to get free first. What a sticky and awful web. My God. At least we're not falling. Let's go ahead and get rid of it before... Before what? Look out! Help me! Somebody! Nine, get off, bad insect. You hear Quiet. me? Quiet. Were the butterflies and spiders not enough for you? Look, these here ants can carry 20 times more than what they weigh. They could carry us away and not even notice. Ah! The fact that an ant can drag such a large weight doesn't mean he's stronger than us. An ant can carry a large load. Large in comparison with the ant itself. Now, what did I tell you? <laughs> Better not to get involved with them at all. But that's only because he's so small. About a millimeter. Let's try to increase him 1,000 times up to a meter. Don't be afraid. Now, the weight of this giant ant is one billion times more. Exactly. That's the right time to be afraid. The opposite. The bigger the ant becomes, the more helpless he is, because force increases less than weight. There's the ant. We increase him by three parameters, Length, width, and height. That means the body becomes one billion times heavier. But the strength of his feet, only one million times. I'm completely confused by all those zeros. Put simply, the ant will become very big, but his muscles will not, and the ant's strength will not be enough even to lift himself. And he won't be able to lift anything else either. So what? Now they're small and so are we. Huh? Exactly. We became small and light, but our strength did not decrease as much. So now, we can lift more than our weight. It is only a small silly bug. We are intelligent beings and strong. We should really not be afraid. Oh, stop it now. Like you're the most advanced race? <laughs> These bugs are just as smart as we are. Just so you know, they can speak. Bugs can talk? Ha! Don't tease, Pin! If these little bugs can speak, then I'm a bee from the moon! That's it! 
The bees will help us. And then we'll see exactly who's from the moon. <laughs> we just need to send them in the right direction. You think bugs can speak? What, you weren't even impressed that a spider almost ate us up? They can speak just like me and you? Let me explain in a little more detail. Of course, bugs don't communicate exactly like we do. Heck, even we haven't always been able to communicate like we do now. Our ancestors used the language of gestures. And similarly, bugs use their own language of gestures. And it's even pretty advanced. Take the bee, for example. When it finds a field of flowers containing nectar, it would be easy just to load up. But it would be a crime not to tell all your friends about it. So the bee flies right back to its hive and dances. It dances? Not like that. The bee dance isn't just the motion. It's their language of communication in which every move is important. In order to tell the other bees where the nectar reserves are, the bee moves in figure eights. The diagonal straight line of the figure eight is the most important part. With that diagonal line, the bee is indicating the direction to get to the right place. And the distance from the hive depends on the time it took the bee to move along that diagonal line. If it moves for one second, then it's 500 meters to that honey field. Two seconds means two kilometers. After several minutes of this dance, the other bees fly off in the given direction. So how did you ask for help from the bees? Huh? Well... Hi there! Sting me! Oops! That isn't what I wanted to say. Not too far from here, there's a lot of nectar. <laughs> That's it. Now I'll explain how to get there. Are you sure? You're doing everything right? Exactly according to the instructions. While on the straight line, the bee buzzes and shakes its abdomen. 15 shakes of the abdomen per second. Feel the rhythm. It doesn't look like they got anything from your disco dancing. Look at that! They did it! Apparently, bugs do have their own language! Barry! You have opened my eyes! Oh, Barry! Oh. And that's the end of that happy story. But then, of course, we barely got away from the bees before they realized that we had tricked them. <laughs> awesome. But I still don't understand. Where are we going today? And why is Pin in this mood? Moon landing completed successfully. On the moon? Why on the moon? Because someone here bet that bugs can speak and promised to call himself a lunar bee then that person should now accept his loss and live up to his side of the bet. I'm a big, silly Luna Bee. Come on, shake your abdomen. Make it look natural. Dance like there's an onion 10 kilometers to the north. <laughs> flight path received. Commencing flight 10 kilometers to the north. What's he doing? Hey, what? Come Stop. back here, you beastie! Stop! Stop. Stop.